And now, on with the show. Welcome back to Matt Presents, the show where I talk about movie nights. Last time I showed the American Horror Project Volume 1, put out by uh, Arrow Video. It's a uh, box set of three movies, uh, American-made horror movies. Uh, specifically, specifically, regional horror movies. Films that were not made in, like... L.A. or New York, way out in in Middle America somewhere. Um, offhand, I couldn't say where any of these three movies were made, but not L.A. or New York. I also have to keep one of them sticking out of the box so I can like pull it out because if I stick all three in the box, it's hard to, hard to get them out. Comes with a nice little booklet. Talks about the uh, three movies included. And also this nice little mini poster for Pam Greer's Sheba Baby. Because Arrow Video sticks these little advertisements for other Arrow Videos in their, uh, in their DVDs and their Blu-rays. Um, but it's always just, like, a random one. So... I, I, like, never get any good ones. Sheba Baby is probably the best one I've gotten. Just gonna stick that right in there. So the first movie we watched was The Witch Who Came From The Sea. Feminist film theory students, before you write your dissertation on, like, I Spit On Your Grave or The Stepford Wives or whatever, might I recommend The Witch Who Came From The Sea. It's, uh, it's... Perfect essay fodder, because it is it, very strong, very obvious feminist undertones, but uh, also, like, just weird enough, just surreal enough, that it leaves the door open for interpretation. So you could write about a bunch of stuff that possibly the director didn't even intend, but... It's so fucking weird. It's like, what are you going to do? Tell me I'm wrong? Especially because it's Witch Who Came From The Sea. I guarantee your professor has not seen Witch Who Came From The Sea. If they have, they're fucking awesome. Uh, Witch Who Came From The Sea uh, is the story of a woman who was, like, uh, sexually abused by her father as a child. And... Now she has fantasies about murdering strong men, and then the fantasies come true because magic? Or possibly because she's crazy and she actually did it, but then she can't remember that she actually did it? She thinks she just dreamt that she did it? But maybe it's magic? Because it says the witch who came from the sea. It's, it's about a witch. I don't know what happens in this movie, but I like it. It's a great movie. <laughs> I really enjoy this. Like, gen like, unironically, genuinely enjoy this film. Very weird, very surreal, very enjoyable. This was uh, one of the video nasties. So this is the third video nasty we've looked at. And, um, I gotta say, it's one of the better ones. It's, it's certainly unique in that sense. It's, you know, it's the thinking man's video nasty. Except it's not, uh, fucking Possession. Possession is the smart one. Because it's surrealist. But it has, it makes sense. It makes a little more sense. <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening in a lot of this movie. I just know I enjoy it. I uh, I sort of understand why it was a video nasty. It's it's one of the tamer ones in terms of both like gore and in terms of like sexual violence, but I kind of get it. I'm like, okay, this is not this is like mid-range uh video nasty cuz there's a bunch of them that you're like why did you ban this? This is so inoffensive. What what about this made you want to ban it? And then there's some where it's like, okay, yeah, I get that one. And Witcher Came From The Sea is kind of in between them. 
directed by Matt Kimber, or Matt Simber, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. C is a weird letter to start a name with. So, uh, Matt Kimber, uh, directed a lot of black exploitation films in the 70s, despite not being black. <laughs> Did a number of black exploitation films, and then he was, uh, one of the creative forces behind Glow. Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, which, uh, of course, there's a, there's a Netflix series about now, and one of the characters in the Netflix series is Matt Kimber, director of this movie. Although, they changed his name, but it's like, it's, the character is supposed to be Matt Simber. I'm just gonna switch up which way I pronounce it every time. And it was written by Robert Thorne, one of the people who wrote Death Race 2000 with Paul Bartell. So it sort of ties into last week's triple feature. I didn't plan that. I didn't know that ahead of time. But I'm like, oh, look at that. Guy who wrote Death Race 2000. So there's a scene in this movie where she's like, it's, it's her and these two football players and they're getting high, like smoking weed, getting high. But for some reason, they they have a joint, and they stuck the joint in, like, a pipe. So it's it's a joint holding pipe. It's like, what's the point of that? Just, just, you just smoke the joint. Why, why would you bother rolling a joint and then sticking it in a pipe anyway? <laughs> this is the most useless invention. Was this a thing in the 70s? Did people stick joints in pipes and smoke them that way it's just just a weird thing very interesting very fascinating movie very fun movie i mean i can't like i'm talking all highfalutin like it's a smart movie it's fun it's also fun it's just you know good old grindhouse drive-in shit you know Chicks getting topless and slicing them into pieces. That's what it's all about, man. I, I do think this is one of those films, though, that deserves... You know, how they'll, like... Like, all the big... Like, smart newspapers will ignore films like this when they come out, and then, like, 20 years later, they're like, Oh, this film was actually a brilliant, and, uh... Here's what the, the deeper meaning of the film is, and it's like... Then why'd you ignore it when it came out? Why'd you treat it like it was just, like, some forgettable piece of garbage when it came out? This deserves a critical reevaluation. Which who came from the sea? As with most Arrow Blu-rays, because they've all got, they've all got, like, matching artwork, but it's reversible covers, so you can have the original artwork. And I'm pretty sure the original cover for Witch Who Came From The Sea... Let's see if I can pull this out. I'm pretty sure the original cover is a ripoff of something. I think I read that somewhere. <laughs> that this is like a, a Frank Frazetta painting or something. Probably Frazetta. The, everyone ripped off Frazetta. I, I do like the original Witch Who Came From The Sea cover, but also, like, I kind of want to keep the original, like, the, the Arrow video cover. So it, like... The triple feature matches. I don't know. I flip-flop on this. Because I do tend to prefer to have, like, the original artwork on a, on a film. Unless the original artwork is just, like, trash. Molly really knows how to cut men down to size. <laughs> That's what you can title your essay. Cutting men down to size. Then we watched The Premonition. So, um... The thing I, I said, all three of these were, like, rural horror films, and that's why Arrow Video released them together, sort of a, a celebration of regional horror films. But also, all three of these are weird as shit. In Witch Who Came From The Sea, it feels smart. In Carnival of Blood, Malatista's Carnival of Blood, excuse me, it's fun. The premonition just sort of... It drags the movie down. I I couldn't really keep up with this film that well. I don't want to make it sound like I think it's bad or anything. It's uh, interesting, but I don't 
I don't get it. It's like, uh... So it's the story of this woman who went to jail and had her child taken away from her. And her child was adopted by this other family. And now that woman has escaped from jail and is, like, tracking down that family to try to, like, kidnap her daughter back. Uh, and, and the mother of the, the adoptive mother of the woman is having, like, premonitions of her adoptive daughter getting kidnapped. Uh, but then there's also this evil guy who was played by a pretty popular actor, if I can remember. Richard Lynch. Richard Lynch. Uh, look him up. He's definitely in something you've seen. He's one of those character actors that just pops up in everything in, like, a minor role. So, he's there, and he kills the girl's birth mother and kidnaps her himself from from the birth mother who kidnapped her. So, it's a, a double kidnapping now. I don't know why he wanted to kidnap the girl. That's not explained in the movie. And then just, like, the girl escapes and finds her mom because her mom played a played a song that she heard in like a psychic vision i don't know what happened in this movie i am confused by this movie <laughs> it's interesting um a lot of it takes place at a carnival and obviously malatista's carnival of blood takes place at a carnival so that kind of makes a uh, witch who came from the sea feel a little out of place with these other two because it's like Carnival horror, and it's no carnival in this movie. I'm not really sure what all to say about the premonition. I feel like I have on weeks and off weeks with films. Like, some weeks I'm like, oh, well, I have a lot to say about this film. This is a great film, and here's why. And then there's other weeks where I'm like, so I watched this movie, and I liked it. All right, moving on. It's from uh, Robert Allen Sh Schnitzer, a uh, horror exploitation director. Um, I think this came out the same year as Witch Who Came From the Sea. I think these were both 76, and this one was like 73. So, that's the premonition. I don't know what to say about it. Might be worth checking it. I mean, uh, I, I think this box set is actually out of print, but all three movies are on Tubi for free and so maybe judge for yourself if you want to watch the premonition it's strange it's interesting if you watch the other two and really like the other two i would watch the other two first if you enjoy those two then maybe you check out the premonition but ch check out which who came from the sea first and then carnival of blood and then the premonition excuse me Malatista's Carnival of Blood. That is the full title. There's a character in the movie named Malatesta who owns the Carnival of Blood. I don't know why they titled the movie like that. Because it made me think, like, when I first heard it, it's like, oh, Malatesta must be some, like, popular horror director from the 70s I've never heard of. No, it's a character in the movie. This was made by a one-time director. The only reason I can figure it's called that is that there was a movie in 1970 that was called Carnival of Blood, and they wanted to call this Carnival of Blood, and it's like, wait, 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 there's already a Carnival of Blood, so we're gonna call this one Malatista's Carnival of Blood, so people know it's a different movie. It's like, just change the name. Make it, I don't know, Carnival of Death. Cannibal Carnival. Right there. That's a great title. Cannibal Carnival. Fucking slap that on there. It might have been called that. It, it These fucking exploitation drive-in movies, they always have like a thousand different names. Um, so, that's the only reason I can figure it's called that. Malatista's Carnival of Blood. Another weird as hell one. Um... About this uh, carnival, this girl has just started working at this carnival, and uh, there's like the the guy who owns the carnival keeps his family 
underneath it. And they're all, like, cannibals. And maybe vampires. I forget what exactly is wrong with them. But they all have pale skin and eat human flesh, so, like... The carnival is sort of a front to, like, lure people in and eat them. Except, it, throughout the movie, he's never, like, catching and eating guests. It's always the workers. Which, like... No. Keep the workers out there and use them to lure in guests. Then you can start eating guests. Then you have a more steady supply of people to eat. No one's gonna work at your carnival if people keep fuck if workers keep fucking dying. The uh, carnival barker for the whole place is named Doctor Blood, which is just such a like an overtly evil name. And they try to pull this twist on us where he's like helping the main character and telling her all about the uh, the the things that go on in the carnival. But, ooh, twist! He's working with Malatesta! He's actually evil! No shit! Dr. Blood is evil? Can you imagine? I, I enjoyed this pretty well. Um, it's bad. Let's be clear about that. It's a bad movie. But it's a pretty enjoyable bad movie, in my opinion. That's the thing, like... In this movie, the weirdness works because it's kind of bad. In Witch Who Came From the Sea, it kind of works because, like, it just kind of works. The premonition is just weird. It doesn't really swing either way. It's not, like, weird and weird but goofy, and it's not weird but sort of cerebral, sort of enjoyable. Yeah, I liked Carnival of Blood. I, I would encourage you to watch this film. Uh, maybe drunk, maybe drunk would be preferable. Maybe, like, with a group of people, you want to put on, like, a, some, like, goofy horror movie, goofy carnival horror movie. You go, hey, let's watch Carni Malatesta's Carnival of Blood. Gotta be specific. Malatesta's Carnival of Blood. This was directed by Christopher Spieth. Um, he... This is his only movie, to my knowledge. He might have had, like, one other. He made this movie, and... It got picked up, like, he couldn't get it distributed. It finally got picked up by, like, a drive-in theater distributor. That's where all the fucking movies on this show are. This is, like, a drive-in grindhouse show. That's the origin of nearly every movie I've shown so far. There are a few more modern ones that probably debuted at, like, actual theaters, but a lot of them were drive-in and grindhouse movies. He got picked up by a drive-in a drive distributor, and uh, Spieth said he never made much money off of it, and there was never a home video release, so this movie was considered lost until 2000, when Christopher Spieth put up the money to independently produce a DVD for the film. So, uh, sort of lost for a while, for about, I guess this came out in 73, so probably 25 plus years. Um, now it's on Blu-ray, now it's out by Arrow Video. Probably, I assume, most of the people who've seen it have seen it because of Arrow video. I know I probably wouldn't have watched it otherwise. Um, probably I would say for the same for The Premonition. I wouldn't have watched it if it weren't in this box set, but uh, you know, it seems like it had some sort of success when it came out. It has some pretty mainstream actors in it. Like, I don't know, by indie horror standards, some <laughs> known actors in it. Which who came from the sea I had already seen before I bought this triple feature. Because it's a video nasty and I care about the video nasties. And it's one of the better video nasties, which is part of what inspired me to buy this box set. I'm like, well they got which from who came from the sea in there. Wonder what else is in there. Bet it's a bunch of weird horror shit. And I was right. I I got Malatista's Carnival of Blood, which was enjoyable. Um Premonition? Eh.
So, uh, last week, I asked you about, like, a triple feature you would like to do. Like, if, if you could set up your own triple feature, what would it be? And Henry Koslick, I think, said, if it's not Henry Koslick, I'll come in and dub in me saying whoever's name it actually was. Henry Koslick said the, uh, Cornetto trilogy, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and, uh, End of the World. Which is a great trilogy, one of my favorite trilogies. Um... I would be down for showing that. Uh, it is... I, I've i seen all three. Um, I've seen all of Edgar Wright's movies, except for his first movie that, like, just isn't available anywhere legally. I've, I've heard that it's available illegally. I haven't gone searching for it. Yeah, I've seen all three of these movies, and with Matt Presents, I like to have a movie or two in there that I haven't seen. But, uh, I'm not opposed to showing the Cornetto trilogy. I, I would do that. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I'm not opposed to doing a full night of movies I have seen or a full night of movies I haven't seen. I just like to... most of the time. Most of the time it should be one I've seen, one I haven't. And then wild card. It can be anything. I guess I don't actually have an answer for this question because, like... I do the show. I pick all the triple features. So, I guess uh, my answer is, what, what, what triple feature would I do? The triple feature I'm doing tonight. Tonight's question is, what's your favorite Bruce Lee movie? Feels like an easy question. There's a, he didn't make that many movies. Like, for as big a star as he is, for as well-remembered as he is, he didn't do a lot of movies. He's probably better known for Green Hornet than most of his movies. Bruce Lee Triple Feature. We're gonna watch Enter the Dragon. One of the greatest kung fu movies of all time. I shouldn't say that. I like to keep my thoughts reserved for, like, the next video. Enter the Dragon. Then we're gonna watch Big Boss. And end it off with Fist of Fury. And we will talk about those three movies two weeks from now. I am trying my hardest not to say anything about this box set because I have a lot of words to say on this box set, but save it for next time. That's the next episode thing. You, I do that a lot. I'm like, like I'll introduce the movies that I'm going to show tonight and then I'll be like, oh, well, this movie is really good and I really like it. And it's like, wait, 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 hold on. Gotta wait till next week. That's uh, you know, that's what the show is about. It's it's my opinions on the movie, and I like to talk about the uh, DVD or Blu-ray I have of it. Um, assuming I do have a DVD Blu-ray of it. Because... Um, I thought about doing one of those, like, YouTuber, here's my Blu-ray collection videos, but I'm like... It'd be like seven hours, and no one would care, and I'd get distracted with every single movie. Every single movie, I would have to stop and talk about the director and all the good movies that director's made. It's, it's, I'm like, it's not worth it. So, part of Matt Presents, I've sort of integrated it into Matt Presents. Matt Presents is about talking about the movie and talking about the Blu-ray or DVD I have of said movie. So we'll talk about this box set next time. Until then, I'm Matt. Have a nice day.